Yeah, I think he'd at least like to know what these artifacts are, so asking her why they are so important. I'm sure you have many questions, Goofleth, and I will help you as much as I can. There is much you must do you must prepare for first, however. If you need ex assistance, think of asking Dorina or Xanas to accompany you. The others can remain here and help guard the school. That's interesting. So apparently those are joinable NPCs. Donna and, and Xanas. I, I'm wondering why we, Misha isn't. I think she should be. That's interesting. But apparently she's assigned to stay here and... Guard Drogon, which Goofa is none too happy about. Now I don't. I, I think I heard that in Hearts of the Underdark you can have two companions, but I think in this one it's like the original companion. You can have one companion plus summoned animals, familiars, animal companions, stuff like that. Mm. I think Goofa is used to to doing his thing alone, and I doubt that he's going to be too happy with. Xanos at his side. Dorina, I think he could live with, but I don't think he feels it necessary. He'd rather all of them stay here to guard Drogon and keep an eye on, on Ayala, whom he still doesn't trust 100%. And that way it's guaranteed that no funny business will happen, because those, th those, those three, they, they get along so little that, that they can't be in cahoots with one another if this is in fact some sort of conspiracy. So that's to Jogan's safety. I think he, he'd need to he'd want to do that alone. Yeah. Wishing you could go with him. Yeah, I doubt he'd like that. That's true. The poor would be someone he can stand. I think those two are getting along quite well, Goofoth and Dorna. I think she's they apparently have spent some time together. No, he doesn't like you, Xanos. He doesn't like you at all. There is also bound to be some equipment here in the school which can help you. See if you can find some. Healing equipment especially. If you can't find potions, healing kits will have to do. As for the artifacts themselves, I can tell you what I know about them if you wish. It's not much, but it might help. Beyond that, all that remains is to go out into Hilltop and follow the trail of the kobolds. It should not be difficult, their passing will have been noticed, I'm sure. I will help you as much of it as I can, but my first duty is to keep Drogon alive. Whatever is poison is inside him, I intend to fight it. Yeah, I'm asking how Drogon's doing. Lying there on the floor. Pully, it takes all the magic I can muster to keep the poison from killing him. I'll do what I can. He's a strong dwarf. I'm sure he'll pull through. That's good to hear. Asking first and foremost if there's anything he can do to help him. Yes, actually, perhaps there is. I believe the poison is a magically altered form of snake venom. Perhaps from an asp or something similar. If that is the case, there may be some her some herbs that can speed Drogon's recovery. There is an herbalist in Hilltop who should have them. Go to the herbalist and tell him that you need an... Atresum... Tongue. I don't know that word. I don't know if that's lore or something, or an actual thing. Some charcoal and some helm thorn berries. Then bring those back to me. I'm asking if she can help in some other way. I think that's what he's going to do first to ensure that Drogon is safe. Well, that depends. Is Drogon still using the teleportation rings he created? Yeah. <laughs> that has been excited about the rings. <laughs> the fact that you have them is good. As I recall, the ring uses the energy of a focus crystal to pull you to Drogon in the instant before death, correct? You can also use them voluntarily to return to Drogon's side. Seeing as I'll be wherever Drogon is in both cases, we can use that to our advantage. I should be able to use the connection between the ring and the spot you came from to teleport you back there if need be. So it's like the, the stone in the original campaign. That's a good idea. Asking if she has more crystals, because at the moment he has none. No, of course not. <laughs> I would imagine that Drogon has a lab around here, perhaps in his room? If you can find it, there may be a way to make more crystals. So that's something to look out for before we head out. Yeah. Still having some questions. He still wants to know more about the artifacts. 
I know a little about these artifacts, but keep in mind that anything I tell you comes from mostly from memory. I wish I had more detailed information to offer. Let's see. If I remember correctly, there are four artifacts in total. Mummified hand, a dragon's tooth, a statue of a tower, and a mask. I think we saw a mask in the introduction movie. Maybe these were the artifacts. Ask about the hand. It belonged to a powerful lich named Belferon, as I understand it. The hand was all that was left when he was destroyed. I remember it being said that some of Belferon's power remained in the hand. Perhaps someone is trying to tap into it. Or perhaps one of Belferon's, Belferon's old followers wants him resurrected. If that was the case, it would be terrible news. Belferon threatened to destroy Faerun the first time. We certainly don't need him trying again. Well, that's a big goal, destroying all of Faerun. <laughs> certainly Bond villain level. Let's hear about the dragon's tooth. A remnant of the great worm... Here we go. Hephaestagon. A great dragon that also wielded the most evil of the black arts. Well, judging from the name, Hephaestagon is probably a red dragon. Like Hephaestus, the... the Greek god of... Um, of smithing and crafting. The dragon died long ago, but it's possible that the kobolds could have some interest in it. Seeing as they are draconic origin themselves, yeah. It's feasible. I've trouble believing the kobolds are the instigators of this theft, however. It's more likely they serve another, perhaps even a dragon aspiring to have fest against power. Oh, okay, so there's a dragon. Very good. We're in no shape to find a dragon. Not even a really small one. It's probably not going to be a really small one. What about the tower statue? I actually do not know much about that. I believe it was found in a desert tomb many years ago, and one of our visits detected powerful and destructive magic within it. The nature of the magic could not be discerned, however, so it, put, sorry, so it was put aside to be kept safe until more could be discovered about it. I have my doubts that the statue would be of use to anyone. Perhaps its theft was only incidental because it lay with the rest. Somewhat doubt it. What about the mask? That once belonged to a high priest of the Lord of Shadows, I believe, and it's imbued with considerable power, though nobody has figured out how to use it. Seeing as the god of thieves rarely produces items of benevolent purpose, well, thieves are not necessarily evil. Um, it was decided to best, it was decided best to keep the mask safe and out of his followers' hands. Perhaps someone has figured out how to use the mask's power. If so, any amount of mischief could be expected as a result. And so we know a much, but at the same time little. Why are they so dangerous? All four of them have considerable power of a malevolent nature, although we have yet to discover an application for any of this power. The fact that the power exists could be tempting enough for some, and it's very possible that there may be someone out there who knows more about these artifacts than we do. The trouble will be figuring out which artifact the thief is, in fact, interested in, and what they intend to do with it. Considering the nature of these items, it's certainly evil. Well, we don't know that. We certainly need to get them back, because they're drogons. Somewhat. But that's a good point. I mean, it's remote and everything, but not really safe. And where exactly would somewhere safe be? Behind the walls of a keep, surrounded by guards? What better way to announce that you hide something of value? Good point. No, the Harpers believed that the school was remote enough and nondescript enough to be considered safe from molestation. For many years, that has indeed deep in the case. Ah, the good old purloined letter method. Yeah, I think he's still interested who she is and if you can trust her. You want to know more about me? Whatever for. My past isn't important here. Sounds invasive. I'm not going to flirt with her. I want to be sure you are who you say you are. Drogon recognized me, isn't that enough? I'm guessing that he could have been just delirious. Good point. Regardless, you're going to have to take my word for it this once. I'm sure you have something better to do. <laughs> it sounds very evasive. <laughs> Yeah. 
Asking more about the kobolds, she's the one who chased them after all. Only very little. I came across their tracks when crossing one of the mountain paths with the nether mountains to the north. When I realized that they had left the highlands and come down to the valley, I became alarmed. For kobolds to range so far from their home caves, and this is unusual. Kobolds are tiny draconic predators that rely more on their cunning than their strength to survive. For them to be so bold means they either have much to gain or much more to fear. I think of knows about kobolds. Probably encountered many of them. Yeah. Now, since he hasn't heard about the Harpers, well, I know what the Harpers are. Goofoth will know eventually, but I think he's interested. There's not much to tell, I think. The Harpers seek to maintain a balance in the world, even in the face of those who would abuse their powers. Some claim we are spies, others consider us dangerous meddlers or even outright assassins. In truth, we are a little of all things when the situation warrants it. It's so again, in Goofoth's, he is pretty evasive. You know, it was always our hope that Drogon students might take the cue from their tutor and become Harpers themselves, in fact. What do you think of that? I think Goofoth would like to talk to Drogon about all of that once he wakes up and is recovered. Because that sounds like they're being manipulated into being Harper recruits, and he doesn't like that. One thing he has in common with his older self is that he hates being manipulated. Probably because... I think because nature doesn't manipulate. The wild doesn't manipulate. It kind of forces you to just roll with it. Humans and elves, I guess, manipulate. And probably all intelligent races as well. But these are the ones he has the most direct connection with. No, he's not interested in all, at all. That's too bad. You seem like the kind of man the Harpers could mo use more of. I think he's done with questions. Alright. So... Misha cleaning up. I think this would be a good point to search around a little bit here in the academy. Dining room, the exit to hillway, hilltop, kitchen. Misha <laughs> closing the door. I think she's developing a very motherly touch here, cleaning up, closing the door so that the snow doesn't get in. It's very unpaladin I think. Stairs up. Also, the second level probably where the quarters are. Let's look around here first. There's not much here. Dining room, let's head into the kitchen. Oh, what a mess those kobolds made. <laughs> it's a crate, the kitchen. Meat! A large chunk of meat could feed a family for several days. Empty bottle. Daladonna. I think he's going to take that in case he runs into a werewolf or shape changer, but in that case he'd be screwed anyway, I think. I think it can't hurt to have a bit of supply here. He's going to, well, I'm going to take the empty bottle, fill it with spring water or something. The meat, I think he's very, he's confident that he can hunt his own meals out there, which of course is part of the game, but the character. But I believe that it's more something he'd like to, to have to set traps for, for, for something, possibly. Meat. I don't know that that's there. Fish. 